session to order. May I have a roll call? Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? I'm here. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilman Shammy? Councilwoman Wright? Here. Councilman Lindsay is absent. And Vice Mayor Eggleston? Here. Six members present. And I guess I'll do the invocation. Our Heavenly Father, please guide us in our work session here tonight so that we can do the best we can for the citizens of this great city. With that, please bless our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, and the troops overseas. With that, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, the action on the minutes is not applicable. City manager's report not applicable. Committee reports. And I guess we could end the comments from members of the public. Either one of you two gentlemen got anything to say? No, it's not. <laughs> All right, resolutions none, ordinance none. Other business, discussion on the following boards and commission handbook. If you would, you want to lead in? Me? Or Randy? Randy. Randy. Um, Sure, here's your boards and commission handbook for you guys to discuss. <laughs> Let me know what you think. <laughs> I guess this this thing has been remember jamming around for what? About four years? This is your project. You Okay, yeah, you got my it. project. You got it. So basically I think this would I I'm assuming do a lot to streamline the city and the workings of what we've got by making possibly the boards and communication between the boards and city council a lot easier. We have quite a few boards that really are not effective. I think the only board that we've got is Plan. Mr. Fields and the planning board. Oh, um, I don't think, have we got any other boards that are active? Well, you have your tax review board. You have your board of zoning appeals, which is you guys right now. Um, you have your human rights board, that's not really active. Um, uh, I think they're listed on what we have, I think they're page, on page three. So board of zoning appeals, planning board, civil service commission. Uh, they're not active. Um, our code states they're just there to, um, to hire police officers and people in the public safety field, since we contract out with the sheriff's department. Um, we don't use it. Um, however, that is, uh, we do a report for that every year. We do send that out to the state. Tax Review uh, review Board, Human Rights Board, the Parks and Recreation Board, which I we, we should probably take a look at here soon, and then also your Charter Review Commission. With that, I have got another note here for a disaster committee to be added to this. Great. Um, I think you and I have talked in the past about a financial committee, a uh, public service committee, um, which, go ahead. Streets. That would be under streets, yeah. Um, I would assume water and sewer would be within the public service mm -hmm. end of it. Uh, are there any others that possibly the group may think about that we can entertain my my first problem is going to be where are we going to get all the people to do this um, if we have a member of council sitting with these committees I think for example the public service committee would probably end up being mr. Kitko a member of council and one or two uh, citizens <laughs> But financial committee, the same thing. Member of council. Uh, Mrs. Harris. Mrs. Harris. 
And again, I would think maybe one person from the citizens and two if, if we get enough people. I, th I think best practice would be for council to look at other boards and commission handbooks to see how many people they have on these committees. Each city does it differently. Um, the point of the committee is for the citizen feedback side of things. So I don't know if you guys limit to like, you want no more than 10 people on here instead of having like minimum of two citizens up to X amount so you don't have 25, 30 people on the, on the board. Um, but that's what I would recommend council do is kind of look at how other cities do it. And one of the no notes I had, Mr. Cook, so thanks for doing that, was asking council what other committees you guys wanted to entertain to form. Um, and it sounds like you got a good recollection of, of that discussion. The Public Service Committee, the Finance Committee, um, a Parks and Rec Committee, and get rid of the board. Um, so instead of having a Parks and Rec Board, you have a Parks and Rec Committee. Um, and then uh, those are just some of the basics. We can look at some other cities to see how they had set up. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you guys have any committees out there? Um, oh, yeah. Township? We have a code enforcement review board. Okay. Review code enforcement. So maybe a planning and zoning committee that looks at all of that? Okay. Yeah. And that way, that when someone goes like Mr. Lindsay's looking at the exterior property maintenance code, we go eight, we have Mr. Bond and Councilwoman Wright looking at you know the chicken side of things. That goes into your planning and zoning. So general code committee, I guess, or I don't know how you want to word it. But we want to look at our major operating departments, and that's what we're getting at. So we're at, we're at, you're at your fire, your police, your public safety committee, maybe we can look at. There's not so much we can do with the public safety, because we are with the sheriff's office. We can't have some leeway on that, but we're bound to what their union allows. A lot more control uh, over our fire and EMS department. Uh, so those are some basic ones. But we want to look at our major operating departments, and those are what you want the committees on. So those citizens and you guys help tell us what to do instead of us telling you what we're doing. So as long as you follow those finance, public service, planning and zoning, public safety, that about covers it. Um, you can have like a fun committee too where they go out and they do, you know, maybe special events for this for the citizens where they go out and um, maybe they plan to um, fireworks display instead of the parks and rec board. I, I don't know, just thinking outside the box here. But I think you guys got the gist of where we're going with it. Do you think we need a uh, lands and public buildings committee? Um, hmm. The reason I say that is looking at the quantity, we're going to have to start thinking about the possibility in this next budget that we either put money aside or possibly replacing them. That's for you guys to decide. Um, I don't know if they would fall under somewhere else because that would maybe fall under the Public Service Committee since they're dealing with those departments. Um, that's the thought. There's only so much they can do as a committee. That's what's weird. That's what would be kind of odd about that one. You're only going to meet for lands and buildings. So well, I guess lands is pretty, pretty, pretty broad. The buildings only have so much. We only have so many buildings. Or a public improvement committee, maybe, where you look at the general thing as a whole, as a city as a whole, and find out what can be approved. Instead of just lands and buildings, I don't know. I talked with Mr. Fields earlier today, and he's got a couple of comments that he'd like to make in regards to some things that's on the... Uh... Thank you, Mayor Cook. Uh, Council, if you'd look at page five in your thing, I'm going to address the uh, top of that where it says any board commission member appointed or reappointed to a city board or commission will be required to be sworn in by the chair of the board or commission. I suggest that you as council swear your people in. We are at your service. Mm -hmm. We serve the public for you. So I think that should be something that the council swears in, not the person that's the chair or president of the board does. Because you're appointing these people to these boards, I think you folks should swear them in. The bottom of that page down there it says advise, and it's a, under some responsibilities of city council, liaisons include, particularly number three, advise the city council of any activities conducted by the board or commission through regular reports. I submit a report every time we have a meeting to Mr. Moore, who is our planning board director, and 
It also has a cover copy to City Council, which I assume you guys get in your package when that comes to you for whatever we've done. It's usually in your packet. So, as far as the liaison goes, I've not had very many, very few meetings that I didn't have one or at least two council people sitting in the audience anyway. Peggy's been to my meetings, Mr. Cook's been to my meetings, Dale's been to my meetings. So, I mean, you can deal with that however you want, but that's covered, I think, already. Page seven. Can I ask that before we move on, before we get out of the topic? So you're advising that number three goes away and... No, I'm advising that that's, that's a good idea, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they have to actually assign somebody to it, however they want to do it. But generally, there's one or two of you people at those meetings anyway. My understanding of that is when you have committee reports on your agenda, the board president from that board comes up and gives a report on those that board's dealings, correct? Yeah, I give a I give a report to Mr. Moore and then he forwards it on to council with whatever it is that we've done. Right, but there may be some report that you guys had a meeting where Brian's not there and you guys are just doing like a work session. Then I would submit you, a report to you that you could turn it to the council. But then you're putting that back on the administration. The whole point of this is to take this off the administration. Okay, then I'll submit the report to the council. Well that that's why you have committee reports on the agenda so they can come and give the report in person. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I understand. I just want to make sure everybody understands. Yeah, your I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're there. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So yeah. on page seven down there where it says role of election in terms of chair and vice chair. I'm not real happy with chair and vice chair. I'd rather keep it president, and vice president, as it's been for years and years. I'm on my either fourth or fifth term of planning director or planning planning board, so. And it's always been president, vice president. I can't see changing that unless you guys just want to make it that way. It seems to work okay. The other part of that is up on top of page eight where it says, uh, need to hold an election at the first of every year and do a one year term. I think you need a three year term in that. I've been doing it for four so far. Council's thought on a three-year term. For the president? Yeah, for president, vice president. I think you should have a three-year term with that. I don't um, see a problem with that chairman, vice chair, but we're changing that to president, vice president. Your own charter only allows your mayor to be two years at a time. So there's a reason why there, they have limitations on there so the same person's not all the time. We have, they don't have any current bylaws to govern the current boards. So that's why we're here. So it's your chance to actually make it better because you may have someone in, you know, that doesn't do very well or a new board come in that doesn't operate like the planning board. But the whole reason why you want to rotate that out is just for one person doesn't have the controlling, you know, power year in and year out. Whether it be one or two, I don't think it should super exceed what the mayor could be as term. So maybe instead of a three, that's a two. Um, the fail-safe on that has always got the council that can remove them. That's your fail-safe. The council always has final say. If you've got a board member that's not doing up to par, doing what's supposed to be done, not doing their duties like they're supposed to, it's your responsibility to get them out of there. But what if you're a friend with all these people and they have a hard time making that decision? There's a difference between friendship and business. <laughs> There's a difference between friendship and business. Business is business. Friendship something else. Go ahead. The only other thing I would say to that is kind of the flip side to having those shorter terms. And, I, and I'm, I'm okay with doing a two instead of a three to keep it consistent with the mayor. Um, is it does give somebody as a chair an opportunity to step down if maybe they're not doing a bad job, but maybe they just need a graceful way to step down from a responsibility if their life is just too busy to keep going, but it gives them that opportunity with having those term limits. So we always like to, I think, look at the kind of the negative side of, well, if they're not doing their job, we can get them out of it. Sometimes it's also term limits are a graceful way to allow somebody to step down 
I agree, I agree with you, and, and as always, you, you folks have a lot to say. Well, I can whatever. understand the, the longer term for continuity, mm -hmm. and, and I think that applies the committees as well as up here. Um, I don't want to say this. If you're not satisfied with the job that the mayor is doing or any member of that, they would have an opportunity at the first meeting in the second year of removing them. So we can look at that. Uh, you got council, anything else, Is council want to make the changes Mr. Fields recommending? Because if not, we're going to have to go back through the whole thing and do a motion. So he's got some great changes. If council wants to do those, maybe we change them as we go along instead of letting we can get do that. and then. So if we go back to the, what's the first one you said, Mr. Fields, on page, was it page three, sir? Five. Five. Yeah. And that was the... The council should actually swear in the council people. swear in. Because they're serving the city and the council. Is council okay with that change? And the council selects. I mean, you, you're the selection committee, basically. They've got to come before you for whatever board or commission you want to appoint. <coughs> So I think it should be you that swear to the men, formally. I'm good with that. The mayor. Right. I'm very good. I, I general counsel, so I think we're good. Okay, thank you. And the number three bullet points advise the city council of any activities are conducted by board or commission through regular reports or council work sessions. Did you want to change that or just listen to Mr. Fields? I only recommend I change it, say, at council work sessions or at a regular meeting. That way they're not pinned to just being at a work session. It's always better to have a live report so we can ask questions. I agree. These council lines. Like, we just like to see Steve. Sure. Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't? <laughs> so council's okay to add regular session? Yes. You gonna make a motion of that? I was going to ask a question. Um, Go ahead. Does that mean you will come after a meeting so we know what you're working on? If you want me here, I'll be here. Okay. Because, I mean, we don't usually get a report. I've never seen one. You, no, well, I, you. I give a written report. It goes right. to Mr. Moore. Right. I heard you. And it's addressed to him and city council. Right. It should be included in your packet. Generally, it is. Because I've not seen one, so I don't know. Well, you haven't had one for a while. Okay. You're about well, to get one, I think. So you do have one every meeting you have? Whenever or? we have a, a planning board, mm -hmm. I write a report. The next morning, Mr. Moore has it in his okay. inbox of all the highlights of the meeting, what we did, what we approved, what we didn't approve, what we changed. Yeah. The wording is always ended with, it's up to you guys to do whatever else you want, changes made or send it the way it is. It's always left to you as final say. Right. Because you have final say. I just know that sometimes people have asked me stuff and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. If you'd like me to come in and give you a report on a planning board session that after the meeting, the following council meeting, I'll be glad to do it. Just tell me that's what you want me to do. That's something I would be okay with. I don't know about you guys. Hey, go ahead, Randy. I, I, how we've done it before to pass is, is not the best way to do it. So here we have an opportunity to change it. What is the what I think is the correct way is planning board has their meeting. That next meeting, we bring that site plan to you guys. We'll just use a site plan, for example, because that's what's going on in town nowadays. So they just approved the Taco Bell site plan. So you'll have that report in your council packet coming up on the 6th but they're just minutes. What, what, what we're failing here is someone from that board who sits at that podium so you guys can ask questions directly to that president about the ins and outs. We only know so much. Brian doesn't come to the meetings. I don't go to the planning board meetings. Right. So the only information you have is what's recorded on that side. So you may have some additional questions that that board person who's on that board can sit there and answer for you. That's why you again have committee reports on that agenda line item. So as we get into these boards and committees, your, you know, let's say your public service committee, hey, we had a meeting last night, we need to come up, they're gonna stand at that podium and say, hey, this is what we talked about, for us the council, what do you think about it? Or hey, we have questions for that committee, you know, we're in the board, seven of the citizens, we're involved in that decision-making process. I think when you look at that, 
that makes sense as to why we have that board person come to that. This administration, we are just the middle man. We are here to give the information, you know, to the best of our ability. Um, and we can speak on behalf of the board, but again, we don't know the ins and outs of what their decision making was other than what we have in front of us. As I interpret what you're saying, after their meeting, whichever committee it would have to be, the next council meeting, one of their members would be here. Did it, did it, if they don't have a meeting, they don't. nobody would show. Or you guys can request a member from the committee right. to come and give a report at any, any time. Yes. I, I think that gives value to that member, too. Like, well, we're not just sitting here spinning our wheels for nothing. You know, I know when Parks and Rec, I did that for a little while, and it was just like, okay, well, whatever, you know, and it just did its own little thing. And Well, the only thing I was concerned about was the fact that having 10 or 12 committees mm -hmm. and everybody sitting mm -hmm. here at the same time. Right. They when they haven't had a meeting and haven't had anything. Oh, no, I, so, no so, if they haven't had a meeting, that'd be you know, my, I would, if we could word it a certain way of having, after their meeting, a committee meeting, the next meeting. An update one after of their meeting. One people would come to council for an yeah. update. Well, you guys would have that liaison there too, so keep that in mind as well. Have the, I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. You guys have liaisons on your board, so right. your liaisons should one, you should have at least one person. Right. Yeah, and they could update too, I guess. Okay. And you guys, you guys can do it however you want. That's why I always say, look at other cities. Other cities do it. Zip City does it one way, Corbin Township are doing it. You got to find a sub formula that works for you guys. Committees are in place, that's a step in the right direction. How they report, that's that's up to you guys. That's 100% for you guys. I like I like the idea of, of somebody actually being here that you can ask questions to. That's, I, I would, if I was in your shoes, that's what I would look for. So I put somebody up here that would say, okay, I, want, I got a question, what is this? And you're not going to get that with what you said. You got your liaisons here from the city. Mr. Moore evidently doesn't come to these meetings when they well, have the council. The, right? the li liaison should give the committee report. Well, yeah, the liaison could. Yeah. You guys have a liaison, could, so, so could the commissioner. Mr. Grimm is on the planning uh, the planning board, and I'm almost sure positive you're as a non-voting member, but we we'll have to look into that legality. You go to the planning board stuff, and then you report back to your elected officials. It says in there that it's non-voting. Non so you guys would sit there, you know, assign. So that would still work. Well, it's not you coming. It's council, and that one person can answer the question. Yeah, but the my, my point is, is I don't mind coming. If they sure. want me here, I come. Oh, yeah, for sure. Not a problem. I don't have a problem with that. Do you want to have these changes as we go along here? No, I got it. I got a sense. I think we'll just do it in one motion at the end of okay. change. Yeah. Yeah, I, I serve at their pleasure, so if they want me here, I'm going to be here. Okay. Trial and error. Start from new, start from scratch. You may, you may start something, not like it. Let's change it up. All right, so we're at page. Did we skip? I got the last change you did was page five. I don't think you've got that many changes in here. The other, was the, the other one was the chair to president advice, and I think they agreed with that. So. Which one was that one, sir? I was on seven, page seven. What was the What was the change? The so role of uh, uh, election terms of chair and vice chair, and I'd rather keep it president and vice president as it's been all these years. Oh, uh, so just change from chair to president? And yeah, I'll just change it from chair to, to vice president and president. Do we have vice presidents right now? We do have one. Patricia is the vice president of the planning board. Okay. She sits at my right hand. <coughs> She'll be okay with that. Just like. <coughs> Vice Mayor Eggleston, she sits in the same position. Okay. Um, and then you, you guys decide on a two-year term. Is that what you decide? That sounds good. I mean, that's better than one. Yeah. It's like, you know, you get going with something. And, hey, you only got, you know, we only may have, only have two or three. Three, two or three meetings the whole year. It just depends on what comes. 
and you never know. I think we've only had like three meetings this year so far. Yeah, but you guys can meet a lot more because if you guys want to look at your codes and change those codes. Well, we did one. Well, right. Well, but on your own. You guys can have yeah, monthly we, meetings. Yeah, we could, just kind but we wait for you to recommend what you need. But that's the issue. That's the issue. That's the issue. You guys should so be you need a plan, you need code, plan, whatever, you have like that. You, you need a commission to recommend this and this. I mean, we'll help you, but yeah, I think okay. it's I a got you. cool process. I got you. We can do that, too. Why am I not finding a three-year term on here? It's one-year term. It's one year top it says at the top of the next page, right? Oh, I see it. Top of page eight. Got it. Mr. Mayor? Yes. On a related topic, I guess it's page four, length of terms of service of office of the City Board of Commission. Terms of office for City Board of Commission shall be three years. Should, since we're aligning the president, vice president with the mayor's terms, should we align the membership with the councilman's terms? Make it four years. Me too. Four it is. Any other comments? Consistency. <laughs> Chris, you got any comments? Okay. I got. I guess we've got six. You got more, buddy. You got more. Sir? Undecided, you Mr. Sammy. I can't hear you. You got more. <laughs> More, more changes. No, no, I, I, that was it. Oh, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Oh, that was easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hard. I'm not difficult. I'll try to be. <laughs> try to be helpful, but you know, <coughs> sometimes I'm not very helpful. Sometimes I aggravate people, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. Well. Are you on tap with that length of service? Yeah, I got it. Four years. No. Okay. Any other changes that anybody would like to see made? I'm sure we'll have some as we go along, but um. can I say one more thing, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Steve. I've read through this thing several times and I've kind of dissected it, and it, it really looks like a good package to me based on what I've seen through it. I would like to see some of the other appendix put in here that aren't there yet, but I think, I'm sure they're coming. Uh, Mr. Bridge said in his report that they were coming there in here that says they're coming, so. But overall, I think this is a, a, a great atom to go with for what I've seen of it. Well, in my estimation, it's gonna streamline a lot of things that we do if we can I guess the words to get enough citizen and citizen input. That's that's your only other obstacle is getting enough people to volunteer to do these things. And I would assume that the fact that most of these committees would only meet three, maybe four times a year. Probably quarterly, yeah. I wouldn't think that we would have much problem, but again, I don't know. You could always call a special meeting if you needed to, a commission could, or board like that. Do you got any more, Mr. Bridge? Uh, there's a section in here about background checking your board appointments. What does council feel about that? About what? Background checking your board appointments. You have someone on a parks and rec board, you might want to make sure they're not a registered sex offender. So that's all I'm saying. You know, just a simple background check. It's a $45 fee for the city. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So it's something we might have to look into. But are you going to fingerprint him? Uh, that, that'll be up to whoever we deal with. I think the fingerprinting comes into place for if they're convicted of a certain type of crime or not. I'm not. I don't have expertise in that. 
Right now we, we do it very antiquated. We send them up to the county, they get fingerprinted. Um, but in today's age, I can just put in some, someone's social security number and have something back in 30 seconds through online background checks. But um, definitely something you might want to look at. Um, and then maybe council take a look at this more in depth. We're not anywhere near to getting codified yet. So maybe just kind of look at it. Maybe before next meeting, weekend after that, there's some things I got to add into it, the appendices. Uh, then me and Jake have to sit down and see if there's any conflicts with the charter. Because um, I'm right off the top of my head, there may be some in the charter that if you're on a board, you can't hold another position. So we got to determine, you know, at least liaison, liaison is not really a position on the board. There's got to Jake do some legality, legal wording on that. Um, so we're still probably a month away from this being formally introduced. Should there be no many any more additions from council? Uh, just to give us some time to get, go back and get those appendices in and run it through our law department and see if there's any changes that we need to make um, because of the conflict with the charter and or add that to the charter uh, amendments that we're going to be doing. Um, so, but again, I think it's a good starting point. Mr. Cook has been wanting to this now for what, this is year three. So um, I think we have the council now just to make it happen. I think it's needed. Um, it's new to the city, that's the thing. So it's going to be trial and error. Because like anything new, but the important thing is going in the right direction and getting them started and see how they play out year two, year three. You know, and, and they'll be treated. This will probably not be as time consuming because I think Mr. Bridge has done a lot of work on this, converting it over from the Huber Heights plan. Uh, that thing goes back, what, to Ethan? Oh, probably about that time, yeah. A little bit. I think yeah. he was the one that brought that book in in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I know that's been three, four, if not more. Yeah. And, and really, there's only like maybe 10 to 15 pages of this that are really regulatory. A lot of it is just Q&A. This is how you do that. There's the most of this is what you do. It's really, a, it's, it's a good guiding principle for all your elected officials, really, especially if they don't know Robin rules of order. It definitely carves out that way for them to handle the meeting. I think some of the other questions you guys want to ask yourself as this go along, you can allow each committee to have their own bylaws. The Parks and Rec has bylaws out there that they put in that council should probably look at and say, how are we going to handle that? Once the Parks and Rec committee, then what are their operating guidelines? And then maybe have that in the and see for each one of your boards that you have. You know, some are guided by ORC, your tax review board, your civil service commission. I think some of those are guided by ORC with a little bit of local stuff in there. Um, but your planning boards, your board of zoning appeals, those are your boards that you guys are doing, you know, locally in house with no, you know, ORC oversight other than probably sunshine law aspects of things. So uh, I think once these are developed, you may have a situation where you need to develop some bylaws within the actual committee as well. Um, as far as the next order, item of order, I, th I think council needs to probably look up the parks and rec board and find out what we're going to do with that and get that go ahead and get that disband so we can go ahead and move forward with upgrading our parks um, because it's they haven't met in a while and we're kind of out of standstill with that. And since it has to do with the commission or board, I did want to bring it up to you guys. So just put that in here and advise us how you want to move forward with legislation on that. Uh, should you want to disband that board and start from scratch? Any comment? Good idea. Any other changes that we need to make? Yes. Okay. On page seven. For the bottom. What did you say, Mr. Grimm? Page seven? Page seven for the bottom. Okay. The elections of the chair and vice chair are scheduled on the agenda annually. Should, since we're changing it to two years, it should be biannually. Great call. Great catch. <coughs> and at the end of that paragraph on page eight for a two year term. And the paragraph on eight, page eight. Oh, up top, sir? Yes, sir. We got that. We got that. Oh, uh, well, right here underneath that one, Mr. Grimm, we said biannually. There are no term limits for being designated chair or vice chair. So that'd be a two year limit, right? What? Well, well no, they, they can be a term limit. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I thought the same thing the first time I read it. I thought. <laughs> but it's, 
It's just saying they, <coughs> they can just keep going. Yeah. Foggy head, sorry. Two, two years, two years. As long as they're reelected in, you're good. Yeah. Well, I think we've got a workable document. Anybody else have anything? If not, we'll... That's about as far as I've been. Okay. I'm sure we're going to come up with some other data changes as we go along. But this is a work in progress. Um, I think that once we get closer to the tail end of it, why we can probably hang our hats on the nail and say, hey, we've got a good situation. If not, do I need a motion to adjourn? To adjourn. Okay. Got a motion and a second to adjourn. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 6-0. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We this needed to excuse a, Mr. Lindsay. Not a regular meeting. Uh, we can do that. You can excuse him at the next meeting. We can do it next. Okay. If you want to do that? That's Before.